Happy to be back! Hello Explorer! Welcome to the Traveling Foxes channel where we love making travel vlogs and videos for you to discover and inspire the wanderlust within you. So, right now I'm in Baraka Island, one of the most beautiful islands in the south of the Philippines. Arguably even one of the best sandy beaches in the world. And before I get to showing you the resort we're currently staying at, I mean, I have an excuse to stay a little bit indoors since it started to rain a little bit. Let's rewind back to our trip and I will share with you how we got into Baraka Island, especially now with the 2022 rules and how it's now opened, finally opening up to tourists. Getting to Baraka Island is just a 45 minute flight from Manila. We land at the Katiklan Airport but we still have to go through some steps before we finally reach the sandy island. Since we arranged a private transfer from our hotel, getting to the port where we take a boat to the island was much easier and faster. Getting pretty busy here. Going through the tourist first, do the usual health declaration, and then go to the boat! Yay! Aquanons. Aquanons are the locals in this island. Everyone else falls as a tourist. And since it's quite a popular tourist destination, tourists need to register, pay for government fees and boat services. But it can get busy. Like, really busy. Luckily, our hotel has their own private boat for guests. So, we rode our speedboat for about 15 minutes. Good afternoon, ma'am sir. Welcome to Boracay. Thank you. Another Thank you. 10 to 15 minutes from going to a hotel. Ambassador. Yes, and yes, another 15 minutes drive until finally... Good. Hello, ma'am. Welcome back oh. to the hotel. Thank you. Have a drink. It's a lemon grass tea. Mm, nice. Welcome to Ambassadors in Paradise. So, Ambassador in Paradise has about 60 rooms and we're staying in one of the premier sea view rooms. So we have a nice view of the beach. Also, what I really love about the theme here is it's um, quite tropical and it sort of blends in with the environment. You know, there are a lot of palm trees and the beachfront. It's quite different from the other resorts nearby, you know, quite modern and white. Whereas here, is, you really feel like you're in the Philippines. Like any resort in the island, they have their own specialty food and breakfast buffet. Filipino breakfast. Corned beef. I haven't had corned beef in a long time. Fresh fruits, pineapple juice. Yum, yum. But there were some specific things that we noticed in the resort that had a touch of Dutch. Two things that are dead giveaways that the owner of this resort is Dutch. First is the theme orange and bitter ballin. <laughs> there is actually bitter ballin in the menu. Another bonus giveaway is ta da! Mustard. They got the mustard right. Definitely got the crunchiness right, but I don't know. Hmm. I'm not sure if they got the consistency of the meat inside the bitter ball, and you know, 
Plus, it's not super hot. And we know that bitter bollens are known to be extra hot that it can burn your mouth. This one. I think that, that we're used to eating cheap and nasty bitter bollens <laughs> within the Netherlands and that you're used to a certain type of crunch and meat that burns the roof of your mouth. <laughs> I but mean, that is the, the true bitter bollen in the Netherlands. It's the cheap bitter bollen. These are the good ones. And the, the other thing, the only thing that I would say that they got wrong is there's not enough um, normally. Yes, yeah, because normally what I would do is do this. <laughs> Plop it in. They need to add more mustard. But the thing is, I don't think Filipinos in general like mustard. So they like we like more ketchup. We like ketchup more, maybe mayonnaise, but not that much in mustard. Anyway, Lekker? Um, is the owner of the hotel here Dutch? Yes. Yes, Sal. Sabi ni Ate, yes. So, tama, tama yung guest namin. <laughs> There are a lot of activities to do in and around this island. And plenty of options to go on a food trip and enjoy the nightlife. But since the weather was a bit gloomy when we were there, I opted to just chill by our beachfront. We're at the beachfront now of Ambassadors. And what's nice is they give us like free towels. So since they opened up in 2022, um, they now banned beach beds in the beachfront. Basically, you cannot see any sun beds anymore, um, but they can give you like a blanket or a banig, as you call it here, so that you can still lay down and chill by the beach. I think rain or shine, Boracay is still pretty beautiful. Depending on the season here in Boraca, you can see a lot of the green algae. Eh? But it's only really just forming by the shore. If you walk a little bit over there, oh, it feels so nice. As it is a tropical country, you can't always expect the weather to be on your side. I mean, it is still a beautiful place and still fun to be in even though it is quite stormy but obviously we'd much rather have the sunshine while we're here in Boracay so really hoping in the next couple of days the weather improves or at least enjoy a bit of sunset or sunrise because it is quite a pity it's the month of April and we didn't really expect it to have rain and stormy weather it's usually pretty sunny and um, hot during this time of the year but again you can never tell maybe climate change i don't know anyway thank you guys so much for joining me in this trip it's not done yet we're actually going to be switching hotels so that we can have a different experience of buraka island so do check that out and don't forget to subscribe to the traveling foxes if you haven't yet and click the notification bell button so that you can get updated on our next video coming soon so thanks guys i'm gonna continue my swim bye bye